Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So a few days ago, XRP Veteran, that's at XRP underscore Veteran, sent me this on Twitter. Guys, if you are not following XRP Veteran, you probably should be. Uh, he tweets out a lot of great information, so just a shout out to you, XRP Veteran, thanks so much. And this is from the British Blockchain Association, Marjan Dalatine, about the financial system regulations and mass adoption of XRP. And for those of you guys who do not know, uh, she is an employee of Ripple. Um, Here's just a little bit of info uh, back from 2017 from when she got hired. Ripple is thrilled to announce the addition of a new team member, Marjan Delatine, who will join us as the sales director for Europe. Delatine will lead our sales effort for financial institutions in Europe. She will sell Ripple's commercial blockchain solution to banks looking to offer more competitive cross-border payment services and to join Ripple's growing global network. So she comes from Swift. Dun, da, 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 where she worked for 10 years, most recently in charge of selling their GPI offering. So a uh, little bit of background information. Uh, and I'm not going to play you the video, but I am going to uh, paraphrase what Marjan says um, regarding all this uh, financial systems regulation uh, and finally the mass adoption of XRP. It's some really insightful stuff that we really have to think about while, uh, while thinking about the whole idea of cryptocurrency, financial systems. I know they're such broad concepts and a lot of the time we're so focused, we're so laser focused on the price that we really kind of have to uh, step back and understand the bigger picture before we make judgments. So uh, just to paraphrase. She says, the story of crypto now is a bit different than it was before. 2017 was a crypto party. 2018 was a crypto correction. And 2019 will be the same trend. As long as we don't have, and this is really important, as long as we don't have global consensus regarding cryptocurrency regulation. So ultimately, if that regulation does not come through in 2019, if the final uh, decisions aren't hammered out by then, we will continue to see the same thing, maybe basing or a slightly elevated market. Uh, we, we will probably continue to see Bitcoin, as far as I'm concerned, continue to rise the same way it did in 2016, uh, ever so slightly prime for a speculative bull run. Uh, but this is not what she's talking about. She's talking about real world adoption here. So if there's no consensus regarding cryptocurrency, this is the trend we'll see. Um, from a financial investor perspective, what is important is that the banks should understand that we do not want to replace them. They are a vital and important part of this economy. And as soon as they realize that the technology is not here to replace them, and that cryptocurrency isn't here to replace fiat currencies, they'll begin to warm up to this option. Then they can look at the technology and see how they can use it to benefit their customs. At Ripple, we are creating a global network and this is very tough because you need peers to play with. And so she uses an example with Facebook. With Facebook, the people are using it so you have a network and when you're talking about money and banks and changing technologies, sometimes politics politics get in the way. So she uses again the um, idea of Facebook and how it is a peer-to-peer -peer network and the more people are on the network, the more effectively it functions. You see more connections um, and of course Facebook has got their own MO with regards to advertising and data collection and all that jazz. But ultimately, she's likening uh, the financial uh, system to the social media system in that you need the connectivity in order for it to function properly. And of course, banks and changing their technology and the politics with that get in the way. Why should I change things if my revenue model is going to change? Why should I touch it? And I think that this is a big problem with banks. They don't, they see that it's not broke, so why fix it? Um, but what they really have to learn, they've got to stop, settle down, and listen to what Ripple has to say. Because if Ripple can explain to them that it's a win-win situation, in that, not only will you save on transactions, but you, but you will be able to save so much money that you can even pass those savings on or a portion of those savings on to your customers. So not only will you be making more money, but your customers will be saving more money. It's a win-win situation for everybody. And what she reiterates is that real-time payment solutions work. We've seen it a bit in Europe and other places around the globe, but there's no global infrastructure for cross-border transactions. There is not one central entity that can manage these cross-border payments globally. This is why distributed ledger technology is so great because you don't need one single entity controlling that. And that is a big part of the value that is inherent to Ripple. So if banks and financial institutions can wrap their heads around that, 
Hopefully we'll see more of a push for adoption. Of course, there are so many moving pieces to this, uh, you know, and, and we've always heard that uh, nobody wants to be the first, but everybody is uh, clamoring to be the second. Everybody wants to get on board with the new hottest thing, but nobody wants to be the guinea pig. Of course not. Why would you ever want to do that and risk your business? So just more going to this point, uh, we've got XRP's Crypto Wolf. Uh, he sent me this. That's at XRP. Crypto Wolf, the Bank of Canada and the Monetary Authority of Singapore did an experiment on cross-border and cross-currency payments using central bank digital currencies. This is the first trial between the two central banks and it has great potential to increase efficiencies. Uh, and there's no mention of Ripple here. And um, right now, all these guys are kind of just in the test stages, right? They're not using a particular system exclusively. They are just testing. They are doing trial runs. But I don't know if you guys remember this tweet from back in uh, November or October. This this is uh, from Crypto Hawk, and I found it on Twitter at the Crypto Hawk, and that's when Corey Johnson was still with Ripple, and who is he shaking hands with? Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. So, uh, Bank of Canada doing trial runs with distributed ledger technology. Ripple clearly doing what they need to do around the world, and if you can see here, Corey Johnson says, "I'll say it again, this matters." Hashtag XRP the standard. Jeez, I'm gonna miss Corey Johnson. And this NBK Crypto, that's at NBK. L-Y-R-A-D uh, at Ripple and XRP. Ripple's hiring spree continues. The company is now hiring a project manager in London. It's one of 59 open positions. So Ripple is not going away. Ripple is expanding. Ripple wants to expand that network uh, that Marjan Delatine talks about, right? The social network, the Facebook of payments, the Facebook of cross-border transactions. And it seems as though Ripple is on the right track. Uh, finally here from uh, the real block X that's at at block underscore real with this tweet here and it's just a bit of something to think about with all the good news ripple has been generating and prices remain low and stable while other coins are going up 10 20 100 percent for no reason i have concluded that there is no new retail money coming through the public exchanges but what we're missing here and he goes on to say institutional money is still flowing in daily and they are holding the otc sells kill us in the short term but should pay off in the long term once full utility happens right now out of all the cross-border payments happening i think less than one percent is going through x rapid uh, then he follows up with, I don't think it's manipulation. What we are seeing is market makers and takers hard at work, balancing liquidity with all the development on XRP. We all know Ripple is the most promising. The price we see today is the correct price for the volume of payments being sent through. And then finally, next chance for big price increase should happen once they capture about 10% of all cross-border payments worldwide with the opening of new corridors. And guys, just to remind you, just to reiterate, Japan and the USA are still not live on the system. So guys, a lot to look forward to right now. Being an XRP hodler, the market as a whole is going up. We're seeing Bitcoin go up and that's good too because we can still make money on a spec run. Even if this mass adoption is gonna take time, there is still opportunity. And I know you're not seeing your XRP go up right away, but again, guys, it's last to move and when it does it moves fast so hodl on and i want to hear what you guys think please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already like the video if you like the content i'm providing i always love hearing your comments see you in the next one guys